Okay, then scissors. Retractor. Is up. Okay, pedals. Okay, Judy, you got charge? Charged on twenty. Stand back. Charge. Charged on twenty. Okay, Basil, you clean up again? Yes, sir. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the eighth annual Heart Day. It's a great pleasure to welcome our patients and ex-patients who have experienced open heart surgery. All of us here at the Institute look forward to this day with a great deal of excitement. Our theme this year, as you probably know, is Young Hearts. We are devoting today to the idea of operating on children with congenital defects at a younger and younger age. I want to introduce you now to the man whose great talent and whose intense dedication has made this program possible. Our chief of cardiac surgery, Dr. Thomas Brain. Everybody, Donna. Donna is seven years old. That's right, isn't it, Donna? Now, she had a problem, and her doctor said that there was nothing that could be done for her. Whenever she exerted herself, even just a little bit, playing with her friends, if she couldn't breathe, she turned blue. Well, she had a membrane in her heart that stopped the blood from going to her lungs. Well, we operated on her here. Donna, when was it? It was in May, wasn't it? Now, how would you describe Donna now, Mrs. Clore? We thought she would die, we, or, or be a cripple the rest of her life. We didn't know what to do. Hey, you two. Come here, you two. Now, these are the Berman twins. You probably saw their picture in the Los Angeles Times a couple of months ago. Now, uh, this is Linda, and this is Vicky. It is Vicky, isn't it? Vicky has a mole on her throat. It is Vicky, isn't it? I can't tell. Anyway, one of these twins was a very sick little girl. She had all her major arteries all mixed up. Now, 20 years ago, if anybody came to us with transposition of the great vessels, it was hopeless. Now, you tell me if you can tell which of these twins had a heart operation. Was it this one or this one? Have a look at them. Try and guess. And Neil, stand up there. Get up in your chair. Uh, Neil is a very unusual boy. Only 14 other children in the world have had the kind of operation that Neil's had. I think that makes him kind of special, don't you? What happened? You get lost and stumble in here by accident? Jesus. No, what no, no, is no. this? Don't get excited. It's not good. For Henry, you. I don't even let well people smoke. No, I don't smoke. I just have it there as a reminder. Oh, I love it. Tobacco. Listen, listen, if, if you ever get up the nerve to operate, it looks like I'm not going to make it. Just uh, hold one of these under my nose and uh, like a camel smells water, I'll come to life. 
Oxygen is highly inflammable. It reminds me of Voltaire's last words. Voltaire was dying. Do you know who he was? <laughs> Come on, I don't have all day. He's in bad shape. Two weeks on the outside. The thing is, we could save him. If we had a donor. Not so easy to come by anymore. Just one good motorcycle accident. The day after he dies, there'll be at least three of them. Just fine. You can check down there. You go see him in about an hour. Okay. Uh, Orantes. Right here. Hello. Hi. This is Mr. Orantes. I speak English okay. for him. Uh, yes. His father's fine. Okay. Uh, he's awake now. If he wants to go in and see him. Okay. 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 Thank you, Doctor. Hamlet. Severance. Of course. How have you been? Were you at Heart Day today? Mm hmm For a while. Pretty terrific, wasn't it? How'd you like all those kids? I didn't stay very long. Oh, that's too bad. All the people you were introducing who... Mm hmm I couldn't. Why didn't you walk me to my car? I just thought that with the advances you were talking about, the new techniques, I thought there might be something... Well, your case is a little more complicated. You have some problems. How are you feeling, though? You look terrific. You know, the world changes every day. Every day, we learn something. Occasionally, there are what amount to miracles. Why don't you come in and see me your next checkup? I know you're always busy. Not for a prize patient. Am I really? You know that. It's funny. Sometimes I have a dream. I know a lot of other patients have it. I dream that I wake up and everything is different. And suddenly I'm well. Whatever was wrong is gone and I'm no different from anybody else, from anyone that you might meet on the street. I know that's only a dream. But there are so many people that you have cured. When are you coming in again, Carol? In November. You come and see me, okay? Can I give you a lift? Sure. Mm -hmm. My father's waiting. November. How is it that the greatest hands in the country, by informed consensus, cannot get the little fold in the middle of the tie? I'm a little short of help tonight. You're going to have to do the drinks. Who's coming? Well, Rex and Vivian. Tell me it's Vivian. And a magazine writer from New York named David R. Oh, I'm going to have to go down with his hair all over everything. 
He's the one that did the article on the Kennedys. The one that demythified them. You can't demythify them. Well, you are a bore. You don't read that much anymore. That's the unpleasant truth. It isn't times enough. Mm. See, that's why I'm interested in films. What I think I'm going to do is take a year off. So not a year, maybe, but two or three months. Take my wife someplace. Just catch up with ourselves. An island somewhere. Martinique. Mm. Never been there. Take five or six books I've been meaning to read. I missed your article, unfortunately. Oh, I'll send you a copy of it. And what would you like to have to read on a desert island? A tattooed sailor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the thing about Los Angeles is that it's at the end of the whole American expansion, OK? So it's a city that it's at the end of one period and positioned perfectly to lead the next one. You know, it's like Florence in the era when uh, money and art and science were all joined together. Well, what science do they have in Florence? Leonardo da Vinci. But, like, take medicine now. Well, let's take heart surgery. Okay, now, people come here from all over the country, or well, from all over the world, right? Because they know that you're absolutely the best. Am I exaggerating? See, this is like Lourdes. People come here when they've been given up for dead. They come here expecting miracles. And in a sense, they get them. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be invited here to give report on the state of artificial organ in Japan. First slide. Here is one of the early model of artificial heart made of elastic rubber. We have much better material now. Next slide. This another model later. Next slide. Here is picture of goat, which lived 138 days with complete artificial heart externally mounted without removal of natural heart, but supplanting it. Next. Here is goat, which lived 22 days with artificial heart only. Jesus. Japan society has 1,055 members. What do you think of all this? Wonderful. Only two countries. For the goat. United States and Japan. You're doing some of this work, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Okay. So many people you got working on it. Two or three. This is diagram. Waste. Right. Next. And you make a car that doesn't break down. We're building the absolutely most crucial part of the body because it looks so simple. I mean, it's just a bump. Oh, really? Uh, can I show you how it works? Uh, it is very advanced. In fact, it uses all new technologies. Oh, sure it does. Look at this. We're going to remove someone's heart and install this and expect them to be the way they were before. Lunatic. Dr. Bixio. Uh, I thought I um, uh, recognized you. You're at Georgetown. I was um, uh, down in Bethesda for four years. Who are you? I think you're overlooking something. Uh, you say lunatic, but it wasn't very long ago that heart surgery itself was a dream. That's so. You know, the fact is that 15 years ago when the pacemaker was introduced, it created a furor. Uh, people said that it was unnatural, that it was better to let the sick die in peace. Uh, now, you know, it's considered an everyday affair. No one even questions its use. Who are you? Are you a doctor? Doctor of biology. Oh, biology. That explains it. What if you treat the sick? Here. If someone wants to hear all about it. Well, if he's wrong, he's just completely wrong. Do you know anything about hearts? Yeah, a little. Mm -hmm. yeah. So to see, that's what's amazing. He's a cardiac surgeon. He's not interested in anything new. He already knows everything. Oh, uh, you know, he used to be a boxer in college. What do you mean? Well, he may have taken a 
a few too many hard ones. What are you, Sergeant? Thomas Vrain. Who are you putting me on? No. You're Thomas Vrain, the Thomas Vrain? See, the thing is, what everybody tries to do is very simple. Uh, they try to copy the natural heart. They want to build a heart that resembles it as closely as they can, so they have this kind of thing with, you know, uh, bladders and all that. You get blood damage, clots forming along the edges, uh, fatigue and then failure of, doesn't matter what they use, uh, silicon rubber, polyurethane. It's like the men in the Middle Ages who tried to fly by imitating a bird. But the airplane is nothing like a bird. It's better. It's what nature would have built if she knew how. As a matter of fact, that's what gave me the idea. I said, what's the most efficient pump with the fewest moving parts? Where you been? You're back two days. I don't know. Everything quiets down here. Drop down and see the old man. I did two bypasses and put a six-inch graft in a little girl's aorta while you were reading the morning paper. Everything you need to make a million dollars in the newspapers here if you look for it. What did you see in there today? Well, you don't need any expert advice. It's ruined more people than the interest rates. Those are still the same. By land? Well, that's what you always do, anyway. Well, the last great rush is going to be the land rush, believe me. Nothing else is going to have any value. Now, I remember when you first came to see me raise money for this wing. I didn't know you. I heard of you. And I said to myself, this fellow's not just another doctor. This fellow's got brains. From the California Heart Institute. Yeah, Russia never quite got over it, did he? Well, if he didn't have many enemies, he wouldn't be anybody. And you can testify to that. I don't have any enemies. I have, all I have is some people who don't see eye to eye with me. Now, how could that be? You know, I've been thinking, there in Chicago, a couple of things fell into place for me. I had a kind of illumination. Illumination? Yeah, there's something in the back of my mind. Been there for a long time. You want to hear what it was? I just want to hear one thing. What? What's it going to cost me? you make a year? 20,000. That's not bad. At the time, that was a respectable figure. Mr. Fine, you can't humiliate me about money. I'm not trying to humiliate you. Just wanted to see what society valued your work at. The search is never well paid. You know, Mr. Fine, uh, one day, uh, no one knows when, if your parents lived a long time, that may help, but nothing helps for certain. One day, you may feel a terrible thing happen inside you. And there will be a pain that's uh, so deep, so mortal, we have no way to even gauge it. Uh, you can't breathe, uh, you can hardly move. You know one thing, the mountain of death is on you. They take you to a hospital. Not any of them are already there. You would give anything in the world for just one ordinary breath. The crab is crushing your heart. If at that moment, uh, with the grave open before you, uh, with nothing on earth that can save you uh, uh, from slipping down that steep slope and forever, if at that moment you could have one more year, would you take it? If you were able to have one more week, even one peaceful hour, How long have you been working on this project? Twelve years. That's 
great. Can you put that, uh, sneak that right in between there? Thanks. Thank you, fellas. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. This side up, this side up. Thank you. Dr. Gary? Yes. I'm Larry Hammond, I work in the lab. Well, glad to meet you. I work with Larry. Yes, what's your name? Curtis. Was it Miss Curtis? Curtis Ames. Those two of you, that's it? You're the whole team? Well, it's a start. irreparable damage. We're just trying to keep him alive. How soon can you have him here? Well, tonight, if you want. Morning. Okay. Hello, doctor. How are you?
Remind me to ask sometime where you got this guy. Is he giving you trouble? Trouble? We'll have to invent a new word for it. Yeah, you'll love him. You'll see. How's he doing? Strange tube was giving him a lot of pain. I thought they took that out. Now he wants the stitches out. <laughs> How are you feeling, Henry? Ready to go on television? I have a feeling so great. You want to see something? Look at this. What do you think of that, huh? Not bad. Listen, uh, something uh, I want you to do for me. This nurse. What about her? She the best you can get? She's probably the best in the country. Well, she's killing me. You know, she doesn't give a damn about me. Come on, Henry. I'm busy. Get into bed. Busy? I'm your prize patient. Come on, sit down. Look, um, I want to ask you something. Okay, she... read. Is this true? She uh, said I got my heart from some guy in Omaha. I think that's right. I think he was from Omaha. What color was he? He was a good Italian boy, just like you. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. You did that especially for me? <laughs> I figured you'd reject anything else. Uh, what did he do? Was he married? <laughs> Come on, Henry. 